Hey everyone, how you doing? Dan here, and today I thought we could have a quick look at how to edit raw drone photos on Adobe Lightroom Mobile, and even more, the free version. So you can pretty much download it off the App Store or the Android Play Store, and you'll be good to go. There is a bit of a myth about being able to edit raw photos on the free version of Lightroom Mobile. That is true, but that refers more to kind of like the CR3 files for Canon, or the RW files for Panasonic, and so on. The free version of Lightroom Mobile actually allows you to edit DNG files, and luckily for us DJ, iFlyers, um, them drones actually shoot in DNG for the raw format. So we can actually import these on the free version and get editing. I do have the paid version of Lightroom Mobile, um, but for this video I've logged out just so you can see exactly what you're going to be getting with it. And this is one of the images what we're going to be looking at. So this image was posted on my Instagram not too long ago. It was shot at the Reddish Vale waterfall not too far from me and um, it was a long exposure during daytime. So I'll just quickly show you my exposure settings. So I was at 113th of a second, ISO 100 and I also had an ND64 on there so I could limit the light going into the camera. And this was the result. Now this was the raw image which in all honesty it's a bit flat, it's a bit boring, there's not really much going on with it. But then all of the editing, what I've done, this is how the images come out and this is what I posted on my Instagram. So throughout this video, I'll show you my workflow to get the images off the drone, onto the phone, edit them with the light tab, get creative with the colour tab, add some effects to make the image really pop and then finally crop it for different social medias and export it. So before we have a look at getting the images off the drone onto the phone, um, there's just a couple of settings you need to check before actually shooting the image and that's just to make sure you're shooting a DNG raw file rather than just a JPEG. So there's an option on the drone settings to do this. So I'm just going to connect my drone and then I'll show you how to do that. So I've just noticed on my drone controller that the cat must have got a bit hungry last night because they've totally pretty much eaten my cable which is a bit annoying, I'll have to get a new one, but hopefully it will still work for this tutorial. Just to double check your shooting settings, make sure you're in photo mode and none of the other modes like video, quick shot or panel. Um, so just tap photo and then at the top right you've got the three dots, so just tap on them and then you've got all your options along the top. If you just go to camera and just double check what it is shooting in JPEG and RAW. So this will allow us to get the DNG files off the drone and then we can work with them later on in Lightroom Mobile. I do go over how to do this on my drone photography tutorial as well, so make sure to check that out for more tips on there. And there's also another video with five further tips too, so definitely make sure to check them out before you come to the editing stage. And something I did briefly mention in that video is just your size options too. It can be quite beneficial to have this set to 4x3 instead of 16x9, um, just because you get more crop room to play with in post-production. If you shoot 16 9 you're already going to be shooting a slightly cropped image. So if you shoot 4 3 the image is going to be the full frame off the sensor, and you just get a little bit more playroom in post-production. But that's pretty much it to make sure your drone is shooting a DNG RAW file, which Lightroom can take. So let's get to the next bit of this stage, which is going to be getting the images from the drone to the phone. Now, unfortunately, we have to have a middle ground, such as a PC or a laptop, unless you've got an SD card adapter for your phone. For some reason, the DJI Fly app won't let you transfer a DNG file from the drone to the phone. So you do need either, like I say, a converter um, to get the SD card straight into the phone, or you've got to do it on a computer, which is a bit of a shame, especially if you're on set, and that would be quite handy just to be able to quickly upload an image, edit it, and get it out. But unfortunately, if you've not got the adapter, that's not quite possible at the moment. But maybe that's something we'll see in the Mini 3 when that comes out, that'd be a nice upgrade, and something that would be worth upgrading for, in my opinion. I just get the SD card from the drone, pop it into the laptop, and then I end up with a folder like this, um, so here I've got my DJI um, 0493 file, which is the image what we're going to be using in Lightroom. Of course, this is going to be different on Windows and Apple, but on Apple and iPhone, all I tend to do is go down to Share, go down to AirDrop, and then it will send straight through to my phone. There we go. And then hopefully on the phone, here we go, it's sharing, and here the file is. As you can see, it's super flat, and it's definitely ready to be edited. There are a couple of other ways of doing this, so we've got Google Drive, Dropbox, iCloud, or if you're on an Android phone where you've got a micro SD card, you can always just pop the micro SD card in the computer at the same time, and then just copy the images straight to that. The main thing here is that somehow we get the file onto the phone ready for, to import into Lightroom. And just with this, if I tap on the screen, oops, for some reason it goes green every now and again, but as you can see at the top left, it does say raw. So we do know we're working with a DNG file. So let's open up Adobe Lightroom and import the image. So it's super simple to do. All you need to do is tap this button at the bottom right, the kind of image with a plus. 
hit that and then just go to camera roll and you see for some reason it's showing up as green but we'll tap that one and here we go so we've got this super flat image which is loaded up ready to be edited to an instagram hit so i'll just have a quick run through lightroom and what we've got here so at the top left we've got the histogram which is going to become super important in step two if you tap the screen with two fingers it's going to rotate what data shows here so tap once and that's going to get rid of the information tap again and then that's going to show us the exposure settings so as i was saying this is a long exposure you see that with the one thirteenth of a second and that's how we've got this really nice um trail of water in the image you can also see what i'm on the free version because creative cloud at the top right is got a cross through it and also these features the selective tools the healing brush and the geometry tools all have a little star next to them for the premium upgrade but i'm going to quickly show you all the tools you do get access to which is so so cool considering it's a free app and it can take the dng raw files so we've got the crop tool where we're going to come on to in stage five of this workflow we've also got the auto button here but we're going to avoid that because we want to manually edit our images then we've got the light tab which is the little sun now this is where we're going to be working in in stage two of this process and you get access to your exposure your contrast your highlights shadows whites blacks and your curves you've also got the color tab where you can change your color temperature which is even more handy because it's a dng raw file so we can actually change the color temperature without it having a negative effect on the image and we've also got the vibrancy and saturation also at the top right, if you click on like the color wheel, you then get access to the color mixes where you can click on individual colors and bring out the hue, the saturation, the luminance of that particular color. Now, I can't believe this is included in the free version because this is so, so useful. And this is where you can really get into your image and really make it look as creative as possible. This is how you can edit the image to match what you've got in your head. Um, but it's a super useful tool, but we'll come on to that in stage three. Stage number four, we're gonna have a look at the effects tab and that gives us choices like texture, clarity, dehaze, and vignette. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna look at the crop tool so we can crop our images for different social medias. But let's jump straight into tip number one, which is going to be having a look at the light tab. So when you come to using the light tab, which is the little sunshine, let's click on that. Um, you're gonna get these options as we just went through. I find it super useful to have the histogram on this screen. So I'm just gonna tap the screen again with two fingers. And there we go, we've got the histogram. If you check my other videos on getting better images with your drone, I do go over how to read the histogram properly. But as a quick recap, anything to the left of the graph is underexposed and anything to the right of the graph is overexposed. So as you can see with this image, the majority of the data is over to the left. So it's not underexposed, but it's there's definitely detail in there what we can make brighter to kind of stretch it out a little bit and as you can see we've not really got much data in the highlights so we'll sort that out too so first of all i'm just going to have a play around with the highlights now as you see as i slide the highlights it's going to kind of bring more data to the right of a histogram and i want to really make this water pop here i want to make it pretty much full on white um so i'm just going to do that with the whites and as you can see, we're slowly overexposing that water. I'm not going to do it too much, but something around there I think is looking quite good. And also with the blacks, as you can see, there's not really any data right at the very left of the, of the uh, graph. So I'm just going to slide that down a little bit, just so we get a, a little bit of black data in the image to work with. Now, as you can see, that's looking quite contrasty now. So I'm just going to bring the contrast down a little bit, something looking like that. I'm also going to add a slight contrast curve. Um, so I'm just going to click on the graph, bring the blacks down a little bit more and again just push them highlights up a tad more just to give a very slight S contrast curve. There we go. Now one really cool thing in Lightroom Mobile is if you hold the image down it'll show you the, it'll show you the before and the after. So as you can see already that's looking a lot lot better. It's by no means where I want it to be at the moment but considering we've only spent a couple of minutes editing this already it's definitely looking a lot lot better. So now we're going to move on to step and tip number three which is going to be the colour tab and really make this image pop. So I'm just going to click on the little colour temperature icon. We don't really need the histogram for this bit now so I'm just going to double tap the screen just to get rid of that just so I can kind of see a little bit more with what's going on. Now I'm fairly happy with the colour temperature it is looking how it was shot so I'm not going to mess with that but the colour temperature will change how warm or how cold a scene is. Um, your tint will change how green or how um, magenta it looks and then we've got vibrancy and saturation. Now 
vibrancy and saturation do pretty much the same thing they change the intensity of the colors vibrancy is slightly different because it doesn't affect skin tones so if you've got people in your scene it's probably better to use vibrance but if there's no people saturation will be totally fine so I'm just going to start messing around and bring the saturation up a little bit, mainly because I want these greens and the blue to pop. I've brought the saturation up a little bit now and I'm still not too happy with how it's looking. So I'm going to go to the colour mix at the top right. So when you open the colour mix tab, you're going to be greeted with this screen here. So along the top, these are the colours you can kind of just quickly target. And you've also got the hue, saturation and the luminance. So the hue is how you change a particular colour to another colour. The saturation is the intensity of that colour and the luminance is how bright that colour is. And now this is where we can really start to get into our images. So first of all, I'm going to go to the blue because I want to affect the water. Um, so it's what we're going to do here is we're going to bring the hue up again, down a little bit just so it's turquoisey. I want that nice kind of teal water look. And that's getting just about there. See, I'm fairly happy with that for now. If you do want to affect a very particular colour of the scene, if you tap the aimer at the top, um, right and then you can click on the colour so we'll change this green here to a nice autumn look and um, all I'm going to do is click on it and drag it down and drag the hue down so you can just drag left or right to increase or decrease the hue and I'm going to knock it down to about there for now and then I'm also going to go to the saturation and knock that down just a tad and then luminance, I'm gonna bring this up. So I'm just tapping on these on the right side over here. And then that's gonna bring that up there. So we've got a nice kind of orangey look there. I'm not quite fully happy with it, so I'm just gonna go in and tweak the hue a little bit more. And also on the greens, there we go. That's looking quite nice. And we could have also used the aimer on the water, um, and then that would have allowed us to get it there a little bit quicker, um, but, I like kind of doing it manually to start with. So we kind of get in there now, it's still not perfect. And if all honesty, that's maybe looking a little bit too blue. So let's just bring that intensity up a tad. There we go, that's looking quite nice. So we've got a nice orange and teal look going on now. Um, so we'll just come out of this. And then if we look at the before and after, the exposure is looking really cool now. We can even see these little clouds down here, which have now popped into the scene and the colours are really, really popping. It's looking quite cool now already. Um, but yeah, we're definitely getting there now. But that colour tool is so, so useful. It's great for making scenes really, really pop. It's great for changing the colour of water ever so slightly and changing the greens in the landscapes. So I'm sure you'll be using that quite a lot. Um, but that's pretty much it for colour. Stage number four is now just to make our image pop with the effects. So I'm just gonna go to the effects tab, which is the little square with the triangles in the corner. Normally, depending on the image, I like to put the texture up just a little bit, maybe something like there, and also the clarity up ever so slightly, just to make it a little bit sharper in places. Sometimes I like the dehaze, but it makes it really, really contrasty. So that's just one to have a play around with, and it might work for your image, or it might not. I do like putting a vignette on, but before I do that, there's something else I want to do, which is to crop our image for social media. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way around is because if you put the vignette on now, it's gonna affect the entire image, whereas we want it just to affect the image at the end. Otherwise, we're going to crop out the vignette. Let's go to the crop tool at the top right, which is the third one down. And then you get this screen. So first of all, you can rotate the image to straighten it out. So if your horizon is a little bit wonky, you can just drag to the right or left just to straighten it out. But because this is a top down image, I'm fairly happy with where it already was. So just with these tools here, um, we've got the rotation one where we've just looked at. Then if you click the top button, this is gonna be the aspect ratio of our crop. Now, if it's going on Instagram, we're gonna want 5.4, which we're gonna to change to 4.5, or 16.9, which will change to 9.16. So that'll be great for stories, or 4.5 will be great for our Instagram post feeds. Or you can also do a 1.1, one, one, which is a square. Um, I tend to do all mine for Instagram in 5.4, and then if you go to the top left up here, you'll see the rotate tab. Um, which allows you to get the proper 4.5 instead of a 5.4 crop. And then I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit, change the crop, and I want to just focus on the waterfall. Something looking a little like that. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with that composition. 
I'm just going to hit the little tick down at the bottom right and there we go, we're looking quite nice. Just some other tools on here, you can also rotate the image if you want to. See that's quite a nice crop which I didn't really think about doing on my other image but that is quite nice. I might stick with this one this time around. There we go, let's go with something like that. And this time I am going to rotate it ever so slightly just to line that arc up a little bit better. And you can also flip the image horizontally and vertically if you want to do that. Now I'm looking at this, I think I might have pushed the whites a little bit too much. So I'm just going to go back up here and bring the whites down just ever so slightly and maybe the highlights down. And I'm also just going to bring the shadows and blacks up a little bit more. There we go. That's looking quite good. I'm going to bring a little bit more water in. And then finally I'm just going to go back to my colour tab and just have a little play around with the colours again. This is it now, you just get to the stage where you're pretty much tweaking everything, <laughs> getting everything perfectly right. Cool, so I'm fairly happy with that now. I'm going to hit done. I'm just going to go back to my effects and also just put a slight vignette on it, ever so slightly, just to lead people more into the centre of the image. And you can change the vignette settings down here if you want to. There is also a sharpen tab down here if you do need to sharpen your image a little bit. And you can also do noise reduction as well. Um, but considering I was shooting at ISO 100, that's not something I feel I really need. But there we go, we've got an image for social media. So you've got the undo button up here if you do want to change something, what you've just tweaked. And then if you hold it, you can also redo um, buttons as well, which is quite handy. Um, I'm just going to go back to the crop and make sure we're in the right mode. There we go, that's the 4-5 what we need. Um, because I rotated the image, it put it back to a 5-4. So there we go, that's looking quite nice. That'd be something I'd be fairly happy to put on my Instagram. And like I was saying, if you do want a 169 crop, just go up and click this button here. So that's the top button, go to 916. And there we go, we've got a nice crop for our Instagram story. And we can also put some text at the bottom there in, um, on Instagram, which is quite useful. Um, I'm fairly happy with this image now. So I'm just gonna hit the share button, which is the third one along the top right here in the middle. I'm just going to hit export to camera roll. It's going to do its little process. And there we go. Photo was successfully exported. And there we go. We've got the photo ready to put on social media. And just another quick tip, whilst you're in Adobe Lightroom Mobile, you can also just tap the little question mark at the top and you've got all sorts of little guides just to help you throughout the process. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new about Adobe Lightroom Mobile and editing raw drawn photos. Um, it's a super, super useful tool. It's free to download and you can really, really get into your images and really make them look exactly how you want them to. You can pretty much be as creative as you want with this tool. But this app is so great because you can import images, change the lighting, change your colors, change the effects, crop it for different social medias and also export it. So it's super fun to use and it's also amazing to get super great edits out of your drone images. I'd also love to see any drone images that you guys edit. If you just send them over to my Instagram at Daniel Hall Media, I'll make sure to check them out and maybe even share some of them too. But thank you very much for watching guys. It does mean a lot to me. If you did like this video, please like, comment and subscribe. That would be absolutely amazing, thank you. And make sure to check out the affiliate links down below. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.